Welcome back. Q&A week. Remember, if you send us your question and we use it, you get a hat and a fly box. Uh, something like that. So, this week's question is from Greg Last. It says, Hi Kelly, I enjoy your videos and learn a lot from your presentations. Have you ever done one on fly tying cement slash varnishes? That's a, we're going to discern between those two when we go on. I've tried several and don't like them. I get white deposits on some, glossy finishes on some, globs on some, runny on some, and some evaporate too quick, etc. Any recommendations would be greatly appreciated. Greg Last. So <clears throat> that's a really good question because it's, it's pertinent. It's, it's kind of like when you first start tying, there's a lot of things that become daunting. There's just so many of this and so many of that. And in reality, there isn't. There's only three or maybe three or four different types of head cements and, and glues. And so in the past, we basically had just, you just basically had head cement and use it for everything. And things have progressed and there's a lot more now. And so I'm going to go through, not, not really, it's not really a, a one or over the other because they're all pretty much the same. I'm just going to go through some of the applications and why we use them. I mean, going back in time, everything was head cement and what that was supposed to do was a especially back in the day when you had round thread it was a lot harder to set these things and glue and and uh, anchor them with your with your whip finish or whatever you're using and so because the round stuff would un, unwrap easier and so you basically were gluing the heads from having them coming undone and then you're also I, I think I don't know what generation it was in the 20s or 30s and you start to see the higher gloss finishes and they're just it was really cool looking and it kind of became a standard so so it was called head cement and so and, and Greg's question was cement ver uh, cements and varnishes and they're really the same thing and so I'm going to start with just the basic right and so we've got two different bottles here I've got the water base bottle and the lacquer base and so and, and that's really, when you get right down to it, that's about all you really need. The rest are just uh, for doing different applications. But if from just a beginner start standpoint, or for that matter for anybody, uh, just to finish the head, that's all you would need. I'm going to go over the two of them and just a couple things about them, little nuances about them. I'm going to start with the uh, lacquer because that's kind of back in the varnish day and the, and the lacquer days. And that was kind of the most common. And the thing about lacquer that I really, and this is what I've used most of my life. And so there's, there's a couple positives and a couple negatives. The negative to lacquers is that they're toxic and they, they, they can make you goofier than Johnny if you sw smell them too much. They, they really are dangerous to have for kids. You shouldn't huff them. They're flammable as far as that goes. But if you get past that and you use them wise, you know, don't, don't be stupid with them and use them right you'll be all right. And the thing about lacquer is that it has one thing you do with it. With lacquer, you thin it. That's all you do. And when, if it's not working, you put a little lacquer thinner in it, it'll cure it. I, I painted with this for 30 years in my taxidermy business. And you know, all these fish you see, they're, they're all airbrushed, right? And the thing about lacquers is that, that if, if they're not painting, you thin them. Same with this. You just, but you thin them slowly. You, if you thin them too much, you won't get the build and the shine that you want. But it, it takes a long time to thicken lacquer up. You take two or three, and, and by the way, the lacquer thinners, the stuff you buy that we sell in the stores, it's the same as the stuff that's in the shelf. You know, if you go in your garage and you see some lacquer thinner, it's the same stuff. You can take a drop and, and always when you thin, especially these tiny little bottles, thin with a drop. One drop, stir it around, get it back to the consistency you're looking for, and you're done. You can do that on a bottle this size maybe, man, maybe three times, and then you're going to screw up the consistency. It's just time to throw the, the $5 bottle out. So set that aside, and like I said, this is kind of the old school uh, toxic. And then you get into anything that says non-toxic. Usually this stuff comes in a different color bottle, uh, you know, blue, clear, and it'll, but it'll say right on it, non-toxic it means it's a water-based acrylic and they're they're all the same it's water-based acrylic i don't care if it's one of these i'll go through that in a second if it says non-toxic on it it's water-based that's what makes it non-toxic and you can this stuff 
is a little more complicated because you can't just put a drop of something in it and make it thin out real quick. The thing about the water bases is they can thin, uh, you can over thin them very easily to where they just don't have the adhesion they used to have. And so, and you can do this with several things. I don't use water in mine. Uh, I generally use, uh, if I use water, it's very little, but I usually use denatured alcohol on mine. And so, just to understand how this stuff works, when you thin something, what you're doing is you're accelerating the evaporation. When you make it thinner, you're making it, 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 it you're, you're evaporating in, in the atmosphere, or just sitting here, right, the air. And so the faster it evaporates, the faster it sets up. And so with the denatured alcohol, it helps accelerate that a little bit. It just, it just evaporates quicker, so it sets up a little quicker, which makes it a little nicer. With this stuff, if it gets really hard, you can, you can heat it. You don't put it under flame. You can put it in warm water. That'll help a little bit. And then if it sets up kind of thick like honey, and then you can put your, your thinner in it. It can be denatured alcohol. You can use clear Windex, or you could use just straight up water. I get one, maybe two thins on a water-based acrylic, and I figure it's shot. So, and I mean, it's cheap, it's just five bucks or something. And it, you know, there's just not much of it. So, and again, it's, it's, just, it's just acrylic. You could use, you can use a lot of different stuff with this, but it's all the same thing. If it's a water base, you thin it with either water, denatured alcohol, uh, or clear Windex. So this is kind of new. This is, this is a new glue. It's not, it's not really new. It's still, it's still just a, it's again, this one says non-water or non-toxic, which means it's a water-based acrylic. And it's going to be, this one just has a fluorescing agent in it. So they just added that. So it, it, you know, gives a little fluorescent value to your head. So that's the bottom line. That's the basics right there. That's where you're going into your glues your, that are multifunctional. You can use them to set up, you know, your heads. You can use it to set a little bit of I don't like people to use glue personally uh, for other than the heads. I, people have this idea that if they glue stuff, it saves their fly. If you tie it poorly and they can save it, it doesn't. When you, if you tie the fly poorly and you put that on thinking it'll save you, you'll have a shiny spot and all the shit will fall off anyway. You just, it, it's got to be tie your fly right. On occasion, if you want to set something, you're really setting up, you know, tying in something that you need to set and you can't get enough knots or whatever and you just to hold it in place before you finish that's one thing but don't think it'll save your fly so moving on to the more fun stuff uh cyanoacrylates these are all your zaps zap there, there's a bunch of these crazy glue has them loctite has them they come in different consistencies but basically you're down to the, the, they're all the same thing it's the, i don't care whose labels on it you've got different sets. So just like with the other stuff, you can thin them. These you don't thin, they come thin for you. So the, the standard Zappa gap, right? Now we're into the cements, because this, this is a different application for me. With these things, I'm not using this to put a head cement on a fly and make it look shiny. This is when I'm gonna secure something. So on your Zaps, you've got a, a, the original medium set, which is just how thick it is. And then you go into the thin stuff like this. And then one that I don't have on here, because I don't use it very often, is a gel. And a lot of people like the gels because it gets slow and they can put it on and they can move it around with their bodkin or whatever. Uh, and you know, it's just what you, I don't use it much. And this is the third one. This is kind of, I think, this is called Z-Met. This is Fly Tire Z-Met. I think it's just a blend of these two. I think they just, made it kind of down the middle. It's got an applicator in it. It's really cool. But the difference in these is when you go to the thin sets, they, they penetrate. Just like this lacquer thinner says it's called penetrator. It's thinner than the water base. With these, with these zaps, the thicker it is, it's just a little bit slower, right? And the thinner the set, the more it absorbs through the thread, absorbs through whatever it is it's gluing, might get a little closer to the hook, so maybe you glue to the hook a little more solid. But basically, that's the only difference. It doesn't, it's just how thin the stuff is. If you're used to, I've been working with this stuff since it came out, and I, I, I have no problem with the, the regular set. I've got all three of them. Uh, I got pretty used to this because it's got an applicator. It's kind of nice, but 
long and short, I end up with this stuff 90% of the time. It's just how thin it is. And just as one example to what you would use that for is that, and, 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 and here's an example you don't use it for because I saw this a lot. I'm going to go to that first. I have a lot of people, you know, we do a lot of hair work and they call in and they want it, their heads are spinning. And people get the idea they'll put some zappa gap on that hook and spin their thread and spin their hair right over top of that to see if it'll lock it in. It, that will not lock it in. It will for a minute, but what happens is this stuff kicks so hot. Kick means when it's setting, accelerates. It gets so hot that it just, it wrecks the hair. And so this stuff gets really brittle at the base and it breaks off and you, you just didn't do your fly right anyway. You, you want to be really careful. I saw it when people first started using it, they'd use it on their wing sets and it makes the base really stiff and then they just, it breaks off. So it's not, this is for gluing stuff like wire to your hook when you're, you're cinching it down, you put it on, it holds the wire in. I particularly use it most often on when I put my eyes on my flies. When I'm doing a dumbbell eye, I put the fly on, I figure eight it, and I, I go around the hook like I normally would, come around the eyes. I've got a lot of videos on how we do that. And then I hit it with some, with some zap. And so what I'm trying to do, and then I go back over it with the thread as hard as I can, and all I'm trying to do is get it locked in just a little extra. It will not glue your eyes to that hook. It is not, that's not all you have to do. You have to do the application with the thread. So that's just one example that I would use it for because I don't use it a lot. And when I do, it's for anchoring something down. It's not for a finish. And just, and, and, and I, in some of my old videos, when I first started using GSP, when I used this gel spun thread, it was really slippery. And I would tell people to start their thread and just give it a quick hit of Zappa Gap and like lock it in. You can do the exact same thing by, by waxing. I mean, if you have not watched Davey McPhail's videos, the guy's a genius, man. I love watching this guy. You hear him, and a lot of people, he's got a pretty heavy accent. He's always talking about waxing the thread. And, and it does the same, it'll anchor this stuff onto the hook, you know, to the, the hook just as well as anything. But it's not going to be the same effect as putting the eyes on. But that's a lot less toxic and it's just on this thread because a lot of people have asked me that. You know, you always used to say to use your, to use the Zappa Gap and now you're talking about wax. Well, it's because I forgot about wax. I, I tied with wax threads all my life and then suddenly this came out and uh, I don't know why I couldn't put two and two together. And so then I watched, I think Kurt told me to watch Davey's video and uh, wax my thread it was unbelievable just locked in so that's not really about glue though is it i digress so that would be these are your anchoring or your cement your cyanoacrylates and then and like i said they're all the same it doesn't matter who's i mean if it's gorilla glue it's this it's that it's, it's just it's just anchoring so the last thing i'm going to go over is this uv glues and so, you know, a lot of people use this uh, uh, for almost everything. I don't. I use it for certain aspects, uh, certain ways I'm going to make something look, but I don't use it for head cement and stuff like that. But I'm going to show you, this is just like, just like with the zaps, it comes in different thicknesses, so does the UV stuff. And so you got thin, thin, medium, and thick, right? And so... The thing about this stuff is it, it you have to you have to work with this stuff a lot. I don't use it a lot because I don't mostly because of the applications that I do. I've got buddies, I mean I've grabbed a couple of this is Nick Grove's fly, this is a sculpted fly, this is Mike Schmidt's fly. And you can see and Mike and, and, and I've seen a lot of Richie Strollis' stuff. He used to use it a lot. I don't know if he uses it as much as he'd used to, but the people at Cheech and I know used it a lot. I mean these guys are all superstar tires. And I mean they're so good. They 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 use it one way because I don't use it all the time. It doesn't mean it's an inferior product. It just means I didn't spend the time to get used to it. I, and it's not the style I do. But I'm just showing you because I do a lot of zappa gap on my eyes. And these guys, I, Richie was the first, was the first one that showed me to use it on his eyes. And when you look at these things, you can see I'll show you them that out of the way. You can see it didn't use much. He just puts it around, kind of like a head cement, and they anchor their eyes with them too hit it with the light, and man, they're set up, right? And so that's a really good, and this is on a bucktail, so it's a really solid, solid eye set, and, and, and the glue is never gonna come off. And this is Nick's fly here, 
And what he's doing with this is he's putting it on and he's sculpting this synthetic around and he's made a head that's, it's not stiff, but it's, it's, it's solid, it's giving a shape. In the old days, we used to use uh, acrylic caulk with this. What a pain in the butt. I mean, you're, you're constantly, you have to thin it down and get it around the thing. It was awful. It set really slow. This stuff, you put it on, you get it exactly where you want it. You, you sculpt it, you can put your eye on, you hit it, the light's done. It's, it's just that fast. So it's really, it's got a really cool application for that style, but you really have to practice with this stuff. You have to get used to which consistency you like. Do you want the thin or the thick? I suggest you start with the thin stuff, get used to using it, see how fast it penetrates, see how much glue you need to do, see how, what the times are for setting, because you have to have a light with this stuff. And you know, the, the, this is one of the downsides for me. When I first started using it, if, man, if my lights weren't, if the batteries weren't like totally fresh, my stuff never set up, and I got pissed and threw it away, and, and then I got a really good light, one of the rechargeable ones, and all of a sudden my flies were fine. I didn't have any problems with it. And so that's just one of the learning curves. You've got to get used to it. And so for that reason, I really suggest that you get these little, these little tiny tubes. Don't get the big, the really big tubes. They do dry out. They got a shelf life. Get used to the ones you like so you don't, because it's really expensive. Some of this stuff's 40 bucks a bottle. And so and you don't want to waste it. So I want to show you a couple applications for this because I kind of, and I'll, I'll kind of go over this from the beginning now. The, you know, the first application for the cements or the, uh, the head cements is basically for me is when I want a really shiny head. If you look at this fly, it's a traditional streamer. Absolutely love these flies. I mean, for myself, I tie them a lot. I cannot stand seeing a dirty head on these things. It's got to be a shiny head. It's my era. It's what I grew up with. I just think it's a really sexy look to the fly. It shines it up and, and I want it to be a full gloss. So I'm going to use, I use the, uh, the lacquer based head cement. And, and I missed that when I was telling you, when you're trying to build these heads up, you cannot do it in one coat. You, you, you should try for three if you want to do it right. Do it for three because the first coat's got to penetrate to the thread, through the thread. And with that, it's kind of like if you do anything with varnish with wood, you've got to do a, a grain razor, the first coat, and, and then sand it down. With this, you don't have to sand it, but you've got to let it soak in. The next one starts filling in the gaps through and makes it shiny and clean. It's a long process, but it's worth it because it looks really nice. But I'm going to use that. That's basically all I use lacquers for. All I use head cements for is getting a head that's shiny. Now we go into these UV things. And again, none of the zaps because that's just for anchoring. And then we go into these UV things. And this is where I want, and I, and, and I said, I, I've told people I don't use them a lot. On my nymphs, I really dig this stuff. It makes the sexiest little wing cases and shell backs. And I'm just going to show you on this one here. I think I can point it out. I've got, and, and you can kind of see, can you see that, Jeremy, the shine? This is, this is, you know, really shiny on the back. And I'm doing two things with this. This is two app, this is, uh, the first thing I'm trying for is I want the look. I think it looks really sexy to have that shiny back. And then I developed just a tiny little bubble to the secondary wing, or the, the actual wing case, right? It's just a little bit of a hump. It's really cool looking. And the other thing it does, it virtually makes this thing indestructible. I mean, you cannot break through. If you don't have it on there, you know, tooth gets in it and your wing case comes off. But here's the difference between using that and using any of any the, the varnishes. I can go on this wing case and I can take that, the UV stuff, and I just put a little bit on there and I hit it with the light. And what that does, instead of penetrating the materials, and that's, this is what's critical about this stuff, because I tried to do it the other way with the, the, the lacquers and stuff in the old days, and it just doesn't work. With the old days, when you'd use the lacquers, you'd go in there and you'd set it up and it would absorb into your under material. So underneath here, I've got a little hairs there dubbing. And what happens is it keeps penetrating through and it gets into the other things. And now that, that, that wavy uh, fiber you're trying to present with your dubbing is getting really hard, right? And it's, and it's not what you're looking for. It's getting stiff. And this way with the UV stuff, you put it on and hit it with the light, boom, it's done. Did the same thing up here, did one, and now it's not going to penetrate through and get into my, in my materials underneath or into, you can see the hackles all nice and soft still. 
and I put one more little coat on it, hit it again, and in you know 15 seconds it's all set up, and I got that nice little hump to the back. So that's you know that's what I'm looking for when I do these things, uh, when I use it. And I've got to once I started to use it on my backs and my nymphs, I kind of I, I got kind of addicted to it because it looks really cool. And finally, I'm just going to show you the last application here, and one more thing about this stuff on this. Uh, Pertagon uh, nymph here, quill nymph, it's got this little uh, mylar body, right? You, you put it over it, you hit it, and it's done. This fly is indestructible. You, uh, you could hit this thing with a knife and it's not falling apart. The stuff's already there, keeps a nice shine. One thing I've seen with the thicker stuff is it does tend to yellow more. With the thinner sets, I don't see the yellowing. I still get the buildup, it's still really strong. And it makes an indestructible body. And you don't, you know, with these things, with the new Euro nymphs, you know, everybody's gone into these quills and stuff and the bullets, and it's, and it, it's just, it's just an indestructible fly. It just makes it totally bulletproof. So, but here's where I see it more often. This is what I do with it uh, more than I do the other stuff. Like on this little bar, uh, Copper John, it's got a little tiny uh, reflective back, so a mylar pulled over. You put a little hit of that on the top and you set it. And it doesn't even get down to, and that's the difference between trying to do it with lacquer. If you do it with lacquer, it just keeps going through and through, and it gets down into your peacock, the, the peacock curl that's underneath there. And if you look at that thing, I think we're, is that, is that right? There you are. Right there. If you look at that thing, it's got a little bitty, tiny, really thin set hit, and it makes that nice, shiny, reflective back. Makes it, again, virtually indestructible. You're not going to pull it off. And then you go into this set here. This is a little black hairs there, Rainy's hairs there, bubble back. And it's got the big build. And I, I'm going to tell you just a, just this. People tell you, you know, you talk a lot in your videos. Well, it's because I've witnessed a, a little bit more than some people. And, and one of the things when you see these built, bigger bulbous things like that is what happens is it ends up, it's, it's harder than your materials. And if this hits a rock, it frequently pops off and takes your wing case with you. On the smaller build, you don't see that, but on these, but these are really cool looking, right? It's got that nice humpy back and it's a great fly, but if you use too much of that, it can tend to, when it pops off, when it hits a rock or whatever, it tends to take your whole wing case with it, but it's a, you know, it's a small price to pay to get what you're looking for with this build. When you do this, you know, this is going to be a two or three builds with your, you might get it into and get that hump. But, and then you, you accelerate this, you set it with a, a UV light. You're going to get that big hump like that. You could never do that with the thinner stuff. You could never, well, maybe with the thinner UVs, but never with any of the lacquers that we've talked about. So that's just a couple of the applications. There's really not that many. Basically, there's three sets here. You've got your traditional, you've got your zaps, and then you've got your UVs. All have their own place. They're all, they're, none of them are a one shot. None of them are one thing. You can do it all with it. If it, if it was, it would be the, the standard head cements. But overall, uh, just to recap, just with these, basically you've got a water base and you've got a lacquer. All right, one's a toxic, one's a non-toxic. You thin them to get them to the right consistency and that's all there is to it. Your zaps are anchors and then your UVs, are kind of multi-purpose because I even see people do heads with them. Personally, for me though, I like to use them for a purpose, like like Nick did with this sculpting or Mike Schmidt did with these eyes. Uh, I think that's a better way to do it. But but again, there's only three things to consider, and you know they're all they're all a good tool in the toolbox. Hope you liked it. Hope it helps you out.